Well, good evening, XC. How many of you have come to expectancy of God tonight? Come on, put your hands together. Come on, stick it out. There is peace in the valley when the enemy is surrounding. I will not fear. There is light in the darkness. He's the fire by night, always with us. Come on, sing it out. I know you know it. All hope in the name. to one big chapel, everybody. It's gonna be a great night. All right, let me hear from the evening students where y'all at. They're here. The evening students are here. Well, not all of them are here. We have some of them joining online, like from Mobile to Huntsville. Welcome everybody that's attending online, come on. I know I saw Gadsden and Futon Delay in the building as well, come on. I just love getting to say Futon Delay. I think it's fun. Where's my traditional students at? Come on, traditional, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Y'all, this is this is crazy to me. Where, wait, actually, where's all my second second semester students? Where y'all at? 
All right, all right. If, uh, if you've been in my class before, go ahead and stretch out your hands toward the second semesters. They've got a paper to write. Y'all pray for them. <laughs> I love you guys. Don't hate me yet. This will be good. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, y'all. This is, this is nuts. This is our first one big chapel in this building. Isn't that crazy? That's nuts. <laughs> we are... We are a residential campus as well. Like there are students living here right now. <laughs> that, that also kind of terrifies me a little bit, but for, thank God he's got this. He better anyways. Y'all, I remember in, in 2007 when we built the Grantsville campus, I was a very moody teenager and I, I was sitting um, in Highlands Kids 2, just crying my eyes out. Um, if you don't know this about me, I love to cry. So I was crying my eyes out and just amazed that all that God was doing when we built the Grantsville campus, I was like, I could not believe it. It was blowing my mind. So to see what's happening now, it's just like, oh my God, this is like, this is a miracle. I, and I know maybe, yes, amen, it is. And I, we, don't, we don't really glorify man, but I can't tell you how proud I am of my dad and my mom, honestly. They, I am so proud of them. For the way that they have stayed the course, they've been consistent, they made unpopular decisions, they have honored God above everything. I'm so thankful to God to be under leaders like them. Seriously, I can't, I, I get to call them parents. That stinks for y'all, I get them as parents like that. They are the best. And I, I'm thankful to God for even just the leaders that have been there for my whole life. Like pastor Mark has been my youth pastor. I've had Pastor Jimmy and Bubba back in college, they were my college pastors. There's been so many people who've been a part of my faith journey that I'm just so incredibly thankful for. Ephesians chapter two, verse 19 says that we belong to the household of God. We are no longer strangers, thank God. We're no, we get to belong to this family. And this house was built on a foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And, and your foundation has been set by people like Pastor Chris, people like Pastor Mark, people like whoever is responsible for bringing you to Jesus, people, your parents, the people that maybe funded you to get, to get you here, the impacting whoever. There's been a major foundation set in place by incredible men and women of God who sacrificed so much so that we could have this moment together. We don't take that lightly, but there is one cornerstone, the chief cornerstone, and that is King Jesus. That is King Jesus. And while these people may be the foundation, he's the one that this house really is built on. He, we, Y'all, we are not gathered here at One Book Chapel under the name of Pastor Chris Hodges. That's a cool name. It's not, it's not the one we gather under. We are not even united under the name of Highlands College. That's great, but we are united under the name of King Jesus. So together, as evening students, traditional students, staff, team, whoever you are, let's worship Him, bring our attention to him, let's focus on him tonight. Give him all the praise, all the glory, everything that he is worthy of. So come on, let's pray together. Father, we love you, we adore you, we're here for you. God, we thank you for making this time, this place available. Thank you for this building. Thank you for the lights and the sage and the worship. But God, this is not for us, this is for you. God, would this please, I hope to God that this honors you and glorifies you. May this be a fresh and, and beautiful scent that rises up into heaven. God, this is for you because we love you. We need you. We desperately need you tonight. And God, here at One Big Chapel, we set our eyes on Jesus alone. Help us get rid of every distraction, everything that's keeping us from focusing on you. God, help us to remember again that we are here for you no matter what we've been going through. And Father, with everything in us, we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, all the love, all the adoration. Everything belongs to you. It's in the mighty and precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen.
to tell God how good he is. Come on, outwardly tell him, Lord, you're faithful. Lord, I put my trust in you today. Lord, I put my hope in you today. God, you're, you're righteous. You're just. You're merciful. Today, we, we cling to you. God, we lay every burden at your feet right now. And just ask that you would just come and move, God. Come and move in our hearts right now. Lord, we're desperate for you. Nothing else will satisfy. Nothing else is good enough, God. It's just you. So come and move today.
praise. Let's continue to give him praise. Come on, we serve a good God who is faithful. Yeah. Islands College, you love Jesus. I love it. I love it. Well, hey, before we go any further, why don't you say hey to a few people around you and then go ahead, make your way back to your seat.
my goodness, I am so grateful to be in this room right now. Anybody else just, I just, I'll tell you what, the moment stepping in the room tonight, you can sense God's presence. Um, I feel like in this room, we're gonna talk about this in a minute, we're all family connected in a vision and a purpose in just a really powerful way. Uh, Michael, I wanna honor you. I don't know where, there he is right there on the front. Thank you for leading us so well. I love you. I'm so proud of you. And I just love seeing God's hand on your life in a huge way. Thank you for setting the tone tonight. And really what our pastor has done since Christmas when he shared this is a year of complete surrender. I just feel like that spirit is building right now. And I don't know, I mean, I got a message to preach, but I just wanna look at you guys and just to reflect. We got a great, we have a great God. Our God is powerful. Our God is amazing and he's so good to us. And so come on, look around the room. This is a miracle. You're looking, if, you, if any of you know someone who is lost or any, even a believer who's like, I don't think God does miracles, point them to this room. This is a miracle. And the best part is the people who are here. It's all, all of you guys. Uh, I got a bunch of the HC team here today. Can y'all honor the HC team, faculty, teammates, every one of you guys are amazing. Um, we have a bunch of our, our Church of the Highlands staff that are here. Can y'all honor them as well? Thank y'all for coming including some of our campus pastors, which is just so awesome to have you guys honor you. Thank you for being in the room today. We have some of our HC donors here tonight. Can y'all honor them as well? People who are investing to honor you guys in a huge, huge way. I love it. I love it. It's awesome. Y'all are amazing. And of course, we got some Highlands College students in the room tonight. It's so, so much fun, to, to, and I know Michael kind of already did, did this, but I, want, I just want to see you guys as well. First of all, if you are an AC student, traditional evening, just wave at me. I want to just see where all you guys are. It's all over. I just love it. I love it. All right, all right evening students, where y'all at? Evening students. So I think, I don't want to miss any of these, but I know in the room we have all the Birmingham campuses, right? All, all local Birmingham locations. That, y'all, y'all can shout right there. It's okay. Fulton Dale's got a sign, so that's all I'm saying. And I think we have Oxford that drove in here. That's right. That's right. Go, uh, is it Yellow Jackets, right? Go, go to Yellow Jackets. That's right. And then we have Tuscaloosa. Honored, honored to have you guys with us. I think Gaston's in the house here today. And of course, again, all the Birmingham campuses that are here. Awesome. And then uh, joining us, we have on, online today streaming, we have Huntsville, Montgomery, yeah, y'all can shout Mobile, Shoals, Troy, Opelika, Auburn, and Columbus. Come on, put your hands together. We love you guys. We love y'all so much. And, uh, and then we also have just an incredible group. And I think it's fun to honor this group, for all of us to honor this group, because I remember what I was doing at 18, and it really wasn't pursuing God's call in my life. But we got a bunch of 18 to 23-year-old students, traditional students who are, who are here tonight serving God in their generation. Can we honor our traditional students? Come on, everybody else in the room. We're so, we're so, we're honor you guys. It's amazing uh, to have you all here. And we have some new students, both in traditional and evening. And it's just, this is one big chapel that kind of really the intent has always been for this to be a moment where we kind of step wherever we've been, we step from there to here. I just want to say that from the very beginning. Wherever you have been, God has brought you here, and it is not by accident. And I just love reflecting on this at the beginning of every semester. You're sitting here tonight in this room or joining us online. Hey, everybody, you're in the center of God's will for your life. You are not here by accident. You've responded to His call. And I know the enemy loves to come in. We're going to talk about this tonight, come in and distract and discourage well, let's stand firm in the reality tonight, the truth, and that is God has called us. And if he's called us, come on, he will complete the work he begins in us. You are exactly where you're supposed to be at the right moment. And we're gonna have what I believe is gonna be just the best semester ever. And it's gonna be great for a lot of reasons. We got a lot of great classes coming your way. We got a lot of great practicums coming your way. We got, I mean, we got a brand new residence hall here on campus for traditional students. It's awesome. Actually got a brand new fitness facility. Like we got a, there's a lot of things that we do and that we have around here and they're all amazing. They're a whole lot of fun. But the best part of Highlands College is what you're seeing right now in this room. It is the people that God has brought alongside you. And you may be a new student here tonight and you may think this is crazy, but I promise you, this has been the story of Highlands College since the beginning, is that you will meet people along along the journey that will become so close they're like family to you. 
So we say HC family. That's, that's our, really our rally cry because the best part of what God has always done here has been the people he'll connect you with, people who will be with you for the rest of your life. Honestly, there may be, for some of you guys, no one outside of this room may really understand what you're doing. I mean, you're, you're going to a ministry college. They're so confused. They don't understand. Everyone in this room understands and it connects us in a powerful way. And so I have a message to preach tonight, but I really just felt led driving in tonight before we go into the message, just to really lean into the HC family. Cause I believe, and I think all of us agree, this is an urgent moment for the gospel of Jesus Christ in the world. And so you are more important than I think you may have ever realized. And because of that, we've always, we've always recognized in ministry, you've I'm sure recognized already, there's always a target on, your, on our backs. The enemy would love to come and steal, kill and destroy. So I just think we should start out with prayer tonight. We're in 21 days of prayer. How I many of you guys agree? Prayer, prayer should be our first response. And it's gonna get a little messy. I'm okay with that because it's, it's, this is family. I'm gonna have you guys just pray with each other and just find maybe two or three, four people around you and just lock arms. You may not even know them. Introduce yourself and just share with each other how you can pray for each other. We're gonna take about five minutes and just cover each other in prayer before we go a step further. Come on, go for it right now. Where you are, you stand up, just turn in your seat. Just get with the people right around you and let's dig in in prayer. more minutes. Just keep digging in for each other. Think about two more minutes. Just believing that campuses, the same thing that's happening here is happening there. This is the Spirit of God is moving. You just sense it. The covering and the power of prayer. Keep going for it.
highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all, all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all, oh your name, your name is the highest, your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones all thrones and dominion all powers and positions your name stands above them all and you hear souls cry holy God, you are holy, you are powerful, you are mighty. God, you are the beginning, you are the end. God, you are everything that we've ever needed, wanted, desired. God, we find our rest and our hope in you tonight. God, we thank you that you have called us as your children. God, we're your sons and your daughters. Come on, thank you for salvation right now. You went to that cross and you died for me. I should have been the one on the cross, but you went for me. God, you were raised to life and you have raised us to life. We have a fresh start. The old is gone, the new has come. You filled us with the power of your Holy Spirit. Come on, receive just a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit tonight. We, we yield all control to you, God. We put you in control of our minds and of our hearts, of our hands, of our feet, of our, of our ears. God, what we'll listen to, what we'll look at, where we'll go, how we'll serve. God, our life is yours. Fill us with the power and the fire of the Holy Spirit. May it burn deep inside of us. God, fan into flame the call of God that you have put on our life. We don't understand it. We know that we're not qualified for it by any other means, but you, God, in ourselves, we can't. But God, you have called us. You've made us competent as ministers of the new covenant. And God, we're just grateful for today and fresh and new at the beginning of the semester. We commit our lives to that call. Come on, commit it. Make an altar right there where you are. God, we commit our lives to you. God, we give you this semester. It's out of our hands and it's in your hands. Everything we're gonna experience in the next three months, we trust you with it. You're gonna supply all, all that we need. God, you're gonna lead us, guide us, direct us, give us wisdom and revelation. God, you're gonna change us. We're gonna be different. God, we're gonna be different three months from now because you've been with us this semester. And God, we give you all the praise and glory and the honor. Come on, if you love Jesus tonight, come on, give him one more shout of praise. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. All right, you can high five somebody where you are, take a seat. I feel like we've already had church, but we're still at church, so let's go for it. I love 21 days. It's just one big church service. I mean, I feel like we were just at church. Was that this morning we were at church? We were at church this morning. We were at church tonight. We're going to be at church tomorrow morning. Come on. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, really excited to be with you just for a few more minutes tonight and share something that's, that honestly, is really, uh, this is one of those deals that's really raw. It's more of a leadership lesson maybe than a sermon, but it's something that God's really stirring inside of me that I just felt like I had, had to share tonight. And it really all started uh, over Christmas break, just reflecting. I take kind of the week after Christmas and um, you know, spend time like probably many of you do reflecting on the year, thinking about the next year and just really took about 30 minutes and just, and I put this on the screen, guys, just looked at our key verse for Highlands College, Luke 10, 2. And really just, I was just asking the Lord, like baptize me fresh and new with the wonder 
of this opportunity. And you guys, you guys know the verse. It says, the harvest is plentiful. And this is Jesus. It makes it even to me even more powerful that this is coming directly out of his mouth. He said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, who he is the Lord of the harvest. So he's really saying, here's, here's my prayer request for you. I, this is how I want you to pray. Pray to send workers out into that harvest field. And just thinking about that verse, and I know you've heard it, you've seen it written different places. It's something that I think we've all memorized. But just being reminded fresh and new, really two parts of that, the incredible opportunity that God has invited us into, that the harvest, the harvest is, you know, it's, it's referencing a harvest, thinking, and we think maybe of a field, but that harvest are the amazing people on this planet. The people that God loves so much, that many of which are lost, just like we once were lost. That's, that's the harvest. It's an incredible opportunity. How many of you guys would agree? It's also an incredible responsibility. Like to know that God has called me, and that's, I spent just time in prayer. God, I don't, again, I don't know why you did it, but I, I can't believe you did it. And God, I commit once again to this response. If you've given me this opportunity and it came with this responsibility, you have all of who I am, holding nothing back. Because we live in a world today, I think the harvest is more plentiful than ever. And for many reasons, I do believe the laborers are fewer than ever. And it is no accident that Highlands College was born 10 years ago for such a time as this. And it is no accident you're here today. And so just in prayer, as I was reflecting on that verse, really just thinking about, okay, if that's our opportunity, that's our responsibility, how, you know, how are we going to get there? How are we going to live out the call of God on our life in this generation? And the bottom line, and this is like narrowing it all the way down to the bottom line, is that we all got to grow. That's how we're going to do it. It's a huge responsibility, bigger than any of us. And if we're ever going to see that harvest come in, if we're ever going to fulfill the Great Commission, which I believe we can do in our generation, then our posture has to be one of, hey, I'm just going to grow. Anybody join Highlands College because you know you need to grow? Any perfect leaders here? I hadn't met one yet, right? There's always room for us to grow. And that's the posture I want us to lean into tonight. And I'm just going to share personally tonight the area that I feel like is the biggest area that I'm growing right now, that I'm learning, that I, I need to grow in this area, that God is really challenging me. To me right now, what I'm going to share with you tonight, this is right now the, the leadership lesson that I'm personally in the middle of. And it, it's going to come from Philippians chapter 3. If you have your Bibles Philippians 3, um, we're going to look at verses 12 through 14. And this is Paul writing. He says, not that I've attained all of this or I have already been arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal of to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Aren't those amazing words? And that's just one example in the life of Paul of a, of a power he had as a leader. And this is where I feel like God is really challenging me to grow. If you want to write down a title tonight, we're going to talk about the power of focus. The power, which really, honestly, the superpower of focus. This one thing I do. And God's really been stirring this in, in my life in, in, in a really dynamic way through a relationship uh, some of you guys were at Impact Conference, not this year, but last year, and I uh, heard Dr. Nito Cubain speak. Anybody remember Dr. Cubain? He's just incredible. He's a Lebanese immigrant, came to America as a young man, and literally with nothing, and he's just, he's, he's in so many different spheres, he's been an incredible leader in, the, in ministry, in the business world, and now he's leading a college called High Point University. And about six months ago, he, because of relationship between he, he and Pastor Chris, he just said, hey, would you let guys like me to help you? And, and anything that I could ever do for you that we've learned here, we'd love to give to you as you build Highlands College. And really, honestly, I think it, it all started at impact. He really felt called. What he, he experienced, what he experienced here, he couldn't forget. He couldn't shake it off. He's like, hey, I'd just love to help you. And so we've been, we've been engaged in that, in that mentoring relationship, and it's been incredible. It's been like a crash course in so many different things because they're just up there in front of us you know, in, in, in building a college. And so as part of that, we've gone up there to visit High Point, and it's a crazy university. Without a doubt, it's the second best college in America right after this, <laughs> without a doubt. And I mean, if you, if you ever have seen it or been there, it's just, it's almost hard to describe or maybe believe till you see it. And that's just, they built a college really around life skills, and they have, they have many, many different degrees, but the entire campus is all about translating that into, into real life, and they have these incredible buildings. Over the last 15 years, y'all, they've built 130 buildings on their property 
That's a lot, over $3 billion of infrastructure has been invested into this university, which is just mind blowing. It's when you see them, and it's not just like average buildings. These are some of the best facilities for education that, that I've ever seen. And they just, they kind of go above and beyond in some crazy different ways where they're, they're really helping interpret learning. I mean, like in their, in their Starbucks on campus, they have the fuselage of an airplane because they want to help their students know how to have conversations with people on planes, like business conversations. Is they have these first-class seats in this fuselage. Like, that's where you sit if you're at Starbucks, and they have instructions in front of you on how to engage in a conversation with somebody you never met. It's just like stuff that's just, it's just wild stuff. And they got fountains everywhere. And they, it, we were up there at Christmas. They had like 120 nutcrackers all around campus. I'm like, it's just, it's just like, it's like crazy, all the different, and I could go on and on and on. They've built a children's museum in their city that there's, they've invested a ton in infrastructure. It's just a really, really dynamic place. But as good as all the facilities and all that has been, I think what Jordan and I and the others who've been there have been blown away with is their team. Just the, the magnitude of not, not just Dr. Cubane, but really the team that he's built around him. And we've got like a whole list of things we're learning from him and a bunch of quotes that they just, that we didn't just hear out of one of their mouths. Like these are things that are coming out of all their mouths. And I think there's just incredible, it's incredible culture. Things like at High, at High Point University, we're all about the wow, wow, wow. When people come here, when students come here, we want them to say wow. And then three minutes later, we want them to say wow. And then we want them to say wow. And they build that into their buildings. They build that into their infrastructure. They even have, I think this is great. We need this at Highlands College. Uh, they even have a director of unwow. It is a person's job. Literally, their entire job is to walk around campus every single day looking for unwow. And fixing it. Isn't that awesome? I think that's, if, you got, if you own a business, that's, that's a brilliant thing to do. Who is the director of Unwow? Because we want wow, wow, wow. All right? It's incredible. Uh, I, this is one of my favorite quote of Dr. Cubane's. He says, everything good sooner. Anybody got that same mentality? I'm like, I want everything good, and I want it sooner. I want it now. I want it yesterday, right? Uh, they, they, they're always focused on removing irritants from the system. Anywhere there's an irritant in their system from applications all the way through, and we're learning a lot. They're helping us a lot in that area, making sure that it's user-friendly for everybody. Uh, I love this one, be selectively extravagant and, and prudentially frugal. Like know where to spend money and where to save money. And, and where we wanna spend money, where they're spending money is always investing into the students and the, and the education that's happening on campus. And just, it goes on and on and on. So last time we're there, I'm just like kind of in this wow, wow, wow moment myself. I'm actually, we're staying in the hotel they built on campus for parents, which is like brilliant in itself. So parents can come see their kids. Some of y'all parents are like, we need that at Highlands College. It's coming, all right, it's coming in Jesus' name. I'm sitting there, I'm looking, I'm just looking out the window at this campus, and I'm just like, I mean, I'm saying literally what they want me to say, wow, like this, this, wow, wow, and what is so different, and I'm like, well, I have literally now, after three or four visits, I have, I have dozens of pages of notes, and reflecting on, I was in the hotel room one night, just reflecting on all those notes, and looking around the campus, and wondering how all of that happened, and really recognizing through all that we learned, if you want to boil it down to one thing, it's because for the last 15 years, they have been laser focused on building High Point University. That they have taken all their energy, all their, not this is, this is the team, not just one person, it's the collective vision they have, all their energy, all their passion, all their resources, all their strength. There aren't side hustles at High Point University. They are locked into fulfilling the purpose that they feel they have been called to do. And it's incredible. When you, what you notice is they don't, because of that focus, they don't accept good. They always demand great. What you see, and I think this is what's really cool, and this is what I want more than anything for our team and, and for all of us as followers of Jesus especially, is they just have a confidence that they know, they know who they are and who they're not. And I'm sitting there reflecting, why is focus so rare? Why, the reason it was such a wow is because, honestly, that kind of focus is so rare in our world. Because I think you guys would agree, we live in a world full of distractions. And we live in a world where literally, I mean, how many of you guys, and just be honest tonight, in church tonight, you gotta be honest, you can't lie in church. It's bad, all right? How many of you guys are easily distracted? I am, I'm raising my hand. I'm just, uh, okay, I'm easily distracted. Like squirrel, you're like, what? what's going on, right? And we live in a world where it's just easy to be distracted and the list could, I mean, the list of distractions is getting longer every single day. I mean, I, just, I wrote down a few things just thinking about our daily distractions, our phones. I read a stat that says that Americans check their phones once every eight minutes all day long. Just we're constantly just distracted. What's going on on my phone? What notifications are there? What little, you know, what text has been sent? What email has been sent? And we're on the internet. I mean, you can, you can waste 
a bazillion hours on Facebook and be dumber for it, right? It's just like, we, it just it sucks you in and there's so much distraction. Of course, social media is just uh, the most ridiculous thing in history, but somehow it's become a thing. And so it's there and it's easily to be distracted by it. We can be distracted by politics, culture. I mean, there's our life distractions. I was thinking about just our health can be a distraction. You know, our family, not that our family is a bad distraction, but the activities of our family, any parents in here, God, it's busy right now. I'm raising four kids right now. And it's like our activities have activities. It's just, if you, want to, if you want to be busy, everyone has a plan for your life. And it's easy, before you know it, to be so far away from what you're supposed to really be doing. Our pace is distracting. You know, what we have is distracting, and what we don't have is distracting. We get distracted by our possessions and our things, and we also get distracted by FOMO, what we don't have, the fear of missing out, what other people have that we don't have. And I think there's also opportunity distractions. And this is what I really want to lean into, especially for us as leaders, is that the world is just full of good ideas that are not God ideas. And it's always, check it, it's always an easier path of resistance to a good idea than a God idea. And it is so easy for us just to let life push us in that direction before we know we're a million miles away from the thing God has called us to do. There are distractions everywhere. And I think for, for us, the real danger is, is that we've been called to this incredible opportunity with a huge responsibility that we would stop in our own lives and in the ministries we lead and in, in, in our families in every area of our life, that we would stop at good and never get to the God kind of great. And I think that you need faith to be a Christian leader. I think you need endurance. I think you need failure as a Christian leader. Can anybody ever learn from failure? I mean, I, 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 think, I think you need vision. I mean, of course, we talk about that all the time. You need vision. You need courage to be a leader in our world today, you, especially a, a Christian leader in our world today because you're going to have to say some things that's going to make everybody mad. You've got to have courage. I think you need a, a bunch of things as a, as a Christian leader, but here's where I am right now. I need all of those things, but if I have all of those and I don't have focus, then I'll never fully get to deploy the things God has put inside of me. I'll always fall short. I think God is calling us to, in a distracted world. I think God is calling Highlands College to be a place that's experienced the power of focus. Come on, somebody. That when we look around the world, there's distractions everywhere, but when people look at us, we are laser focused. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Here we are, God send us. And we're locked in, we're focused. So here as we, as we close tonight, I, I just, for me, the beginning of the semester, 21 days of prayer is the perfect time to push away distractions, kind of clear the mechanism and to lean into all that God has for us. And when I, when I read those verses um, over the break of Philippians chapter three, I was just reminded once again, you know, you look through the Bible and there's so many different, you know, leaders in the Bible. And they, they, I mean, like with, with Abraham, you would say faith. And there's so many different, you can like see an attribute or many attributes with leaders. I think when you look at Paul, the thing that jumps out at you here in Philippians 3 and throughout scripture is he knew who he was and what he was called to do and nothing was going to stop him. And I desperately want that in my life. My biggest fear is to end up in my deathbed and have come this close, but not far enough. I mean, you went this far, but you stopped right before the great things that God wanted to do in you and through you. Anybody else want to go all the way with God to our dying breath? I think these verses are a framework for us to focus. If you're taking notes, and you got to take notes because there's going to be a test. Not really, but there could be. I don't know. Here's what I want you to write down. Number one, this comes from, from, uh, from Philippians 3 when Paul says this one thing I do, and then he leans into three things that I want us to write down. The first one is this. Forgetting what is behind. Forgetting what is behind. And Keys, y'all go ahead and come out. I'm gonna close pretty quickly. Uh, we're gonna go back into a time of worship. You know, Paul had a past. Um, Paul had, had this religious past that was full of pride. It was full of, you know, his ambition. He had this drive, ambition. He wanted to be the best of the best. We also know that, that before he was a follower of Jesus, Paul also was a part of really an assassination of taking out a Christian leader of of. of, of you know, capital punishment for someone. He oversaw the death of Stephen. So Paul had a past. So when we read Paul talking about forgetting what is behind, we recognize that that was not an easy, maybe an easy thing for him to do. But what I love when I look at, look at Paul is how easy it is for him to talk about his past. How, how something along the way, and I think we find the, the power and the secret here to what Paul did is he learned how to forget what is behind and move past it in a powerful way. Most people in the world let their past define them. In fact, this, I read this, that the top five deathbed statements are regrets. They're just never able, it's like, y'all have a junk drawer in your house? Anybody have a junk drawer at your house? Y'all you know what I'm talking about? I know y'all got one. 
What is, what, is, what is a junk drawer? A junk drawer is a drawer that never had a purpose, and so it's got a little bit of everything, but not enough of anything. And it just, it just becomes clutter. That's what the enemy wants to do to your life. Just sticking. And here, here's where it's usually going to come. The, the pain in our past, the mistakes in our past, and the failure in our past. That's, that's where the clutter in that junk drawer is going to come. And if we carry that clutter with us, we can never be fully focused. It's always going to be a distraction. And the enemy will use it, especially in ministry, to discourage and defeat. I had the chance to speak at prayer this morning, which feels like seven days ago, but that was this morning. And I was just reminded afterwards, I was just, I'm always just, I, I'm just so grateful, like, to be a part of this. This church changed my life it's in every possible way. So to be any part of it at any level is just a miracle. I was just thanking God driving home this morning and I was reminded of a moment in my past relating to prayers. This is like, I don't even remember what year Pastor Lane was there. He might remember, but it was, it was like probably 2005, six, seven. I don't know, one of the first times I ever spoke at prayer and it was at Grant's Mill. We used to have, we called it the switch room. Y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. It was our youth room. It was upstairs at Grant's Mill on the second floor. And that's where we had prayer during these 21 days. And uh, I had the, Pastor Chris asked me, I had the chance to lead and I was scared to death. I probably didn't sleep for like three days. I get up there and I start preaching this message. And I don't know, I think it was actually pretty good on paper, but what came out of my mouth was the worst thing I have ever heard. It was 10 minutes of pure heresy, pain, confusion. I literally, I think halfway through, I was like, can I start over? And everybody's like, no, don't start, don't. Don't start over. And so I, when I came, off, I came off the stage, in that room that had these banners on the sides, I actually went behind the banner. Like I just ran off the stage and went, went behind the banner. I was just standing there and Pastor Steve Blair, some of y'all know Pastor Steve, he, he walked up to me and I'm, I'm needing a pastor. And Pastor Steve is a great pastor. I'm needing a pastor at this moment. I'm, I, I have just preached the worst sermon in the history of the world. And I go to Pastor Steve and I say, Pastor Steve, I think what just happened up there was the worst sermon in the history of the world. And what I'm expecting him to do is what I would do for somebody. And, and that's putting their arm around him and say, no, I really wasn't that bad. Pastor Steve didn't do that. He just looked at me and he's like, you may be right. <laughs> That's a true story. He's like, you may be right. If y'all know Pastor Steve, you can hear him saying it. He's just like, you may be right. Not even a smile on his face. And then he says this, what are you going to do about it? Uh, can I say that to you? You got some pain in your past. You got some mistakes in your past. Come on, anybody got some failure in your past? What are you gonna do about it? It's either gonna be a junk drawer or it's gonna be an altar tonight. And I say we do what Paul did. This one thing I do, murdered people. I was prideful, I was ambitious. I mean, I have a resume that should take me out of any qualification for ministry, but this one thing I do, I forget what is behind. And I think even the most powerful part of the secret, and that's how he was able to use it, because he had this kind of, and I think we need this as leaders, like a leadership, spiritual, selective memory. It wasn't, I don't think that he forgot anything that happened, but what he did is he, he took hold of the lessons that were learned through that pain and that failure and that mistakes, and he let go of the hurt. And that's what we need to do tonight. We're gonna have a chance here in a minute as we finish, it's an altar moment. If you're carrying any of that junk tonight, God wants us focus. It starts with forgetting what is behind. And then he goes on, of course, to say, we gotta strain towards what is ahead? And I, I love this language here. Uh, Paul is referencing, uh, most likely here, the, the reference would be like a chariot, the Greek chariot races. Y'all have seen movies, right, with the chariot races, like Gladiator or whatever movie like that. And, and chariots, you know, are these, they're, 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 they're these tiny, you know, carriages or buggies. I don't even know what you call them. But they, what's, what's so crazy about a chariot is there's just barely enough room to stand on. There's nothing to hold on to on that chariot. You're holding on to the, the reins of the horses and they are, they are pulling you, you know, in a race at, at incredibly high speeds. And so to be a chariot racer, it took, check this out, it took literally from, the toe, the, from your toes all the way to the top of your head, every single muscle straining towards what is ahead. I am, every part of who I am is locked in towards what's in front of me. And this is the instruction Paul says, this one thing I do, I, I forget what's behind. He's, his one thing has three parts, but it, it, they need each other. I forget what's behind so that I can now lean in with everything, holding nothing back so I can strain towards what is ahead. I love that he uses the language of athletics, that he uses the language of endurance right here. 
that God is calling us, as we said earlier, to grow. If we're gonna lead in this generation, we're gonna have to grow in ways that maybe no other leaders have had to grow. And it's gonna take not part of us, not 10%, 20%, 30%, 80%. Come on, HC. That's why you're in the room tonight. This, but this is a, to me, tonight's a doorway to this reality. It's gonna take all of who we are, 100% straining towards God. Because aren't the greatest moments on the other side usually of the hardest moments in your life? Like it's the hardest moments that get us to the greatest moments. And we've designed Highlands College to be extremely hard on purpose because we want it to bring you to a breaking point so that you push past that and see that God is with you and he has a plan. But I can't do that for you. I can only do that for myself. And honestly, God can't even do that for you. You've got to choose to lock your arms in, to lean into that carriage and to head towards this goal. And I think tonight we have an opportunity for a decision. Tonight we have a chance to decide. I am going, God, this is it's your first semester, what a beautiful chance. Maybe it's your third, second, third, or fourth semester. It's not too late. No distractions, complete focus. I'm gonna strain. I'm in class, I'm gonna get every ounce of what my instructors and faculty are teaching me. In relationships, I'm gonna meet people. I'm gonna grow. I'm gonna get past maybe any anxiety or fear that I have. I'm gonna maximize the people that God has put around me. If it's, if it's a half marathon or an expedition or anything in between, I'm not just gonna show up. I'm gonna lean in because I'm just unwilling to go through this and miss all the gold that you have for me, God. I think God loves it when he sees it because really at the end of the day, all straining towards what ahead is ahead is an act of faith because we can't literally see all that's ahead. So we're just saying, God, you're preparing us in advance for what you want. We don't understand how you're gonna use a half marathon. Some of y'all are like, amen. But I promise he will in ways you don't even understand. This is an incredible season that you've stepped into. Let's forget what is behind Come on, let's strain towards what is ahead because God has called us. I read it earlier, but we've been called as, we are comp, we've been made, made competent as ministers of the new covenant. Come on, look at somebody and say, hey, you're a minister. Look at somebody in the room, encourage them, you're a minister. Look at, some, look at your other neighbor, say, you're a minister. It's crazy that he chose us. Hey, y'all, look at me, but he did. So the best thing we can do, the gift we can give back to him is God, I'm gonna lean in, I'm gonna strain towards every, I'm not gonna miss a moment of the growth you have for me. I'm gonna lean in 100%. Forget what's behind, we strain towards what is ahead. And of course he finishes out with this beautiful line. He says, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And I was thinking about that verse and I was just thinking about Paul and really even reflecting you know, at the end of his life in 2 Timothy as he's literally laying his life down uh, for the gospel. I love that Paul was, in, his, his heart was enraptured for the purpose of God on his life, that, that he, had, he had simplified and focused his life on the one thing that really matters, and that is to win the prize for which God had called him heavenward in Christ Jesus. One of my favorite uh, verses in the Bible, Acts 13, 36. I call this my tombstone verse. Jilda, my wife doesn't like it when I say that, but this is like the verse, I've already decided what I want on my tombstone. Acts 13, 36. Now, when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. <laughs> like that's a simple but powerful verse. I don't need to reflect on David. Any, I, got, I only need like six words to reflect on David. He served God's purpose in his generation. 80 years from now, when I die, 80, 90 years from now, at least, I pray to God that someone can stand on a platform and I pray it's my kids and people that were closest to me that can say, Mark served his purpose, purpose of God in his generation. What I love about that, that reality is the prize that God has called you heavenward. So you, my purpose is not your purpose and your purpose is not their purpose. Your purpose is your purpose and God has called you to it. So we're not responsible for each other's purpose. What we are responsible for is to show up at that day, the day we step into heaven and say, with everything, I, it wasn't perfect. I made so many mistakes along the way. There were ups and there were downs, but God, you captured my heart and I forgot what was behind and I took advantage of every moment and strained towards what was ahead, all to win the prize for which you have called me heavenward. And I just believe with all of my heart, God, if we, if we make that verse and focus our, our value this semester, I believe with all of my heart, God is gonna respond because I think God is always looking for a generation of leaders 
who are willing to focus on what matters most in a world full of distractions. It's what D.L. Moody said. He said, the world has yet to see what God can do with a man fully consecrated to him. By God's help, I aim to be that man. Can I get an amen in church tonight? If you believe that's your goal, come on, that's the goal right there. I aim to be that person fully consecrated, holding nothing back. And I've said this a few times, I'll just just finish here. It's because y'all, the world needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I was, uh, last week, was in Atlanta for, our, or the, for the Passion Conference. And Jill and I, something we do kind of in our rhythm, we do, we try to do a marriage retreat, like just the two of us at the beginning of a year. And we usually kind of use Passion Conference as an opportunity for that. So we'll go to services at night during the day. We're hanging out, talking through just our marriage, how we can get better. She had like a long, I had no list. She had like a long list. It was, it was she's like, can I go first? And I, was, I said, yes. And I kind of regretted it because it was just like, man. But we're, we're, we, were, we were having a ton of fun, hung out with two of our best friends, Mayo, Pastor Mayo and Pastor, and Pastor Kai, who they're just building a beautiful church in Atlanta. We just had, we had, the, we had the best time. But during that time, Jill wanted to go shopping, praise God. And so we went to the mall and we're walking around. And I think just being in a different city, a much bigger city, I just, I started looking around the mall, y'all, and it's different in the world today. I mean, I saw people in 10, 15, 20 minutes from every walk of life, you could see so much confusion with the clothes they were wearing and, and, and the way they were talking, the way purchases were being made, the things that were being valued. It like, it was chaos. And here, here in my flesh, I mean, I'm a pastor. <laughs> I love God in my flesh. It's starting to irritate me. Look at, all, look at all this. And there's so many problems in our world today. I'm frustrated. I'm like pseudo discouraged, frustrated, just kind of like, What's going on? And y'all, I went back to the hotel and the Holy Spirit convicted me. And that's not a problem. That's your purpose. God has put us in a generation that needs him more than ever. What an honor. Acts 17 says he chose this time and this place for us. What an honor that God chose us to serve this generation. Come on, let's love them in their pain, in their hurt, in their brokenness. Let's love them. Let's see them the way God sees them. And let's reach this world for Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen at Highlands College Chapel? Can I get an amen in Auburn and in Troy and Opelika? Come on, stand to your feet. We're going to go into a time of worship just as as a dedication. This is going to be a, we kind of had different moments of worship. This is a, this is a, this is kind of the push play moment for our semester. And I don't know how God is speaking to you in this message around the power of focus, but I guarantee all of us are distracted in some area and we have a chance to really lock in tonight. So maybe during these next few moments as they sing and lead, you may wanna come down here to the altar. You're free to do that or right there in your chair at at all of our locations. And what you need to do tonight more than anything before is to forget what is behind. The enemy's had your number, He's, he's been in your ear and it's distracting. And tonight let's forget what's behind. For others of us, we're here, but we're not fully here yet. And the challenge of God would be that we would strain towards what is ahead. God, I'm giving you the semester 100%. Is it gonna be easy? No. Is there gonna be hurdles along the way? Yes, there's gonna be things that come along the way. There are gonna be challenges probably around every every single week. There's gonna be a new one, but God, I'm gonna press through every one. And I'm not, I'm deciding tonight, I'm not gonna miss anything you have for me. And I think at some point over these next few moments as we close out, we would all just fresh and anew reflect on the purpose of God. And I would love this to turn into your own, in your own heart for just an intercession moment for our world. Our world needs Jesus and thank God he has called us. Come on, put your hands up in the air. Let's just enter this time of worship with thanksgiving and praise. God, we love you tonight. We once again thank you that you've called us and God, you are equipping us. And God, we thank you that you've given us the opportunity to learn from your word tonight. The power of focus, taking all of our energy, all of our passion, all of our strength. And God, giving it to you tonight. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Come on, let's worship.
on, give him praise. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all, he chose us. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I can't believe it. Y'all, help me honor and thank Pastor Mark Pettis for the word. I, I know I can speak for everybody when I say, so far you're already fulfilling the purpose of God. You're like, like don't decay anytime soon, please. But, <laughs> but seriously, thank you for your focus and your commitment. I'm, I am where I am because of you, and I'm thankful to God for you. Help me honor Pastor Mark one more time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, traditional students, classes start tomorrow. Y'all ready? Yeah, let's go. Evening students, y'all get a week to recoup, and uh, so you'll have classes starting next week. Also, chapel um, is on Thursday. We'll be, be with the one and only Pastor Chris Hodges. It's gonna be great. <laughs> He's so cute. I'm excited about it. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, we also have Chris Tomlin coming for in residence day on February 7th. Evening, listen, chapel would be so much better if you would come. You are always, always, always welcome and encouraged, invited. I would go ahead and tell you these traditional students need you anyway, so please come and help them out. But we would love for you all to come and be a part of all of our chapels and residence days. Y'all are always welcome, okay? All right, y'all feel free to stay as long as you want, as long as it's within the next 10 minutes. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, uh, but we do have prayer in the morning, so y'all are dismissed. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Have a wonderful day. Love you guys. See y'all next week, tomorrow, all that. <laughs>